Mamashni. In this lesson, we will again be dealing with equations that include fractions. Now, in the forthcoming lessons, we will be working with denominators that need to be factorized. So, in this lesson, we will also be revising the different ways that we can factorize expressions. By the end of this lesson, you should be able to solve an equation with simple denominators and factorize an expression that includes a common factor, the difference of two squares, or a trinomial. Let's look at this first example. Solve for p if 2 divided by p is equal to 3 divided by p minus 2. Before we solve for p, let's use what we discussed in a previous lesson about restrictions on the denominator. On the left hand side, we have 2 divided by p. We know that the value of p may not be equal to 0. So our restriction is that p is not equal to 0. Now in this fraction on the right hand side we have 3 divided by p minus 2. We know that p minus 2 may not be equal to 0. So let's write that. And p minus 2 may not be equal to 0. So we've got to think, what value of p makes this denominator equal to 0? And the answer is obviously 2, because 2 minus 2 would give me 0. This obviously means that p cannot be equal to 2. OK, now we know the values of p that are not allowed. Let's solve the equation and see what our answers are. Here we have two denominators, p and p minus 2. Remember that p minus 2 is regarded as one whole number, simply because we're taking the value of p and we're subtracting 2 from it. p minus 2 cannot be further factorized. So we can write the LCD as is equal to p multiplied by p minus 2. Do you know what to do with the LCD? Remember, we want to simplify the equation. To do this, we must multiply every term in the equation by the LCD. So, we need to multiply 2 divided by p by the LCD. Remember, we are working with fractions, so we have to write the LCD as a fraction, divided by 1, is equal to 3 divided by p minus 2 multiplied by p times p minus 2 over 1. Now, let's cancel out terms. p divides into p once. p divides into p once. Now here, do you know and remember that p minus 2 is one term, so we can put brackets around it. So the p minus 2 goes into p minus 2 once, and p minus 2 goes into p minus 2 once. We are left with 2 multiplied by p minus 2, which is equal to 3 multiplied by p. Now there's still brackets here, which means we need to multiply 2 into each of the terms in the brackets. We get 2 times p, which is 2p, 2 times minus 2, which is minus 4, which is equal to 3p. Now we can solve for p, but remember, we need to keep the equation in balance. We have 2p minus 4 equals to 3p. I'm going to add 4 to both sides of the equation. So we get 2p minus 4 plus 4 is equal to 3p plus 4. We get 2p is equal to 3p plus 4. Next, I subtract 3p from both sides of the equation. I get 2p minus 3p is equal to 3p minus 3p plus 4. We get minus p is equal to positive 4. Now remember we are solving for positive 1p, which means I need to divide by negative 1 on both sides of the equation. I get p is equal to negative 4. So we need to check whether or not this value for p makes the equation true. 
we know that p equals to negative 4 is allowed because of the restriction. Now, on the left-hand side of the equation, we can substitute p as being negative 4. We get 2 divided by negative 4, which simplifies to 2 divides into 2 once, 2 divides into 4 twice. So I am left with negative a half. On the right-hand side of the equation, if we substitute negative 4 for p, we get 3 divided by negative 4 minus 2, which is equal to 3 divided by negative 6. This simplifies to 3 divides into 3 once, 3 divides into 6 twice. I'm left with negative half. Now, because the left-hand side is equal to the right-hand side, we know that our answer, p equals to negative 4, makes the equation true. Now, let's revise the different ways that we can factorize algebraic expressions. We can factorize by taking out a common factor. Look at this expression. We have two terms separated by the minus sign. Now, we can write x multiplied by x minus 2 multiplied by x. Do you notice a common factor in both these terms? Do you see that the x is the common factor? Now if you remove this common factor, we are left with x multiplied by x minus 2. x multiplied by x gives us x squared. x multiplied by minus 2 gives us minus 2x. So we can write this as x multiplied by x minus 2. Do you see that the original expression can be written as a product of x and x minus 2? Can you remember any other algebraic expression that can be factorized? What about x squared minus 1? Can this be factorized? Is there a common factor? No, there are no common factors. Does the difference of two squares sound familiar to you? Take a look. x squared is a perfect square because it is x times x. 1 is also a perfect square. It is 1 times 1. I hope you remember how to factorize the difference of two squares. x squared minus 1 is equal to x plus 1 into x minus 1. Remember that the brackets contain the same terms but the signs differ. Here's one more example of factorizing. Have a careful look at this example. We have x squared minus x minus 2. Do you have any idea of how to solve this expression? I'm going to give you a clue. Count the number of terms in this expression. We have 1, 2, 3 terms. This specific example is called a trinomial. Do you remember that a trinomial factorizes into two brackets? So we can write is equal to two brackets. Now x squared factorizes into x and x, which form the first term in both these brackets. Now all that's left for us to do is fill in these terms here. Now how do we find these numbers? We look at the third term of the trinomial, which is negative 2. We have to find the factors of negative 2. Negative 2 can be written as negative 2 multiplied by positive 1, or negative 2 can be written as negative 1 multiplied by positive 2. Now, how do we know which of the pair of factors to choose? For this, we look at the middle term of the trinomial. The coefficient of x is minus 1. So now we need to choose the pair of factors that when added up gives me minus 1. Let's see. We've got minus 2 plus 1 is equal to minus 1. So we know that this pair of factors is the correct one. So we can write negative 2 here and positive 1 here. You should always check when you are factorized by multiplying out the result to see if you get to the original expression. Now let's revise what we have learned about factorizing. In the first example, we learned about taking out a common factor. Here, x squared minus 2x is equal to x times x minus 2. 
In the second example, we factorize the difference of two squares. x squared minus 1 is equal to x minus 1 times x plus 1. The trinomial x squared minus x minus 2 is factorized as x minus 2 times x plus 1. In the next lesson, we will use this information to solve more complex equations. But for now, let's revise what we learned in today's lesson. We solved equations with fractions and factorized expressions that included a common factor, the difference of two squares, and a trinomial. Here is your task. Which of the following is the LCM of these numbers? 4, t, and t plus 4. Is it a, 4t, b, 4 plus t, c, 4t times t plus 4, or d, 4 plus t plus t plus 4? Number 2. Factorize a, x squared minus 3x minus 4, b, 2x squared minus 32. So until next time, goodbye.